all started on an ordinary day in the most ordinary place in the world, the refreshment room at Milford Junction. <coughs> I was having a cup of tea and reading a book that I'd got that morning from Boots. My train wasn't due for ten minutes. I looked up and saw a man come in from the platform. He had on an ordinary Mac. His hat was turned down and I didn't even see his face. He got his tea at the counter and turned. Then I did see his face. It was rather a nice face. Yes, you must have recognised it. Brief Encounter, one of the classic movies. If they did make them like that anymore, nostalgia wouldn't be a thing of the past. The encounter itself between Celia Johnson and Trevor Howard was filmed on this very spot in the wartime winter of 1945. And that's why I'm here today. And what would the 60th anniversary be without the extraordinary Mr and Mrs Clark? Do you know, they were so taken with the film that they've spent two years re-enacting it. Their low-budget movie is due for release next summer. It's been a tricky time. Fact and fiction were difficult to disentangle. Carnforth Station became their second home. So were you around in the 40s? I'm afraid not, I was actually born in 1953, so I missed, I, I missed the film by about seven years when it came out in 1945. I like the hats, which nobody wears hats anymore. No, that's so it, true. It was a nicer, I think, time dress-wise. Um, but but you more. missed the 40s completely, did you? As well yes, as I was there. born in 56. <laughs> <laughs> now that the station master has opened the floodgates, steam enthusiasts, film buffs and hopeless romantics like the Clarks will flock to catch the Brief Encounter special for a celebratory excursion through Cumbria. Do you know, it's still the main topic of conversation around here, or at least it was until the postman's cat went missing and the midwife caught her apron in the mangle. Brief Encounter is such big news here, they almost changed the name of the village. In the end, they changed the name of the cinema. Instead of losing yourself in a film, you could get lost in the co-op. I feel awfully grand perched up here. It was very extravagant of you. It's a famous victory. Do you feel guilty at all? I do. Guilty? You ought to more than me, really. You neglected your work this afternoon. I work this morning. A little relaxation never did harm to anyone. Why should either of us feel guilty? They began turning up early for the Brief Encounter special. It was a sellout. Could it really be 60 years since Trevor Howard and Celia Johnson stood here? The McEwans from Willenhall near Wolverhampton were here now. Well, we heard about the trip, and uh, Green is a particular fan of the film, Brief Encounter. I'm more a Casablanca man myself, but uh, <laughs> seeing as I, I, I do the driving, I brought Green for a special day out. It was a birthday three or four days ago. I'd like to tell you that Celia Johnson and Trevor Howard stayed at the Royal Station Hotel while they were making the movie. Would have made a lot of sense and might have kept the budget down a bit. 38 quid a night, bed and breakfast, you go a long way to beat that, wouldn't you? However, they chose a rather more salubrious place in the Lake District somewhere and no doubt travelled in each day in a chauffeur-driven Daimler. However, the hotel did cash in on the brief encounter phenomenon by offering Trevor Howard fish and chip lunches and Celia Johnson tripe and onion suppers. I wonder if they still do them. No, but you can still get kippers for breakfast. Isn't that good? Carnforth was chosen because it was miles away from London, and so the lights used for filming wouldn't attract German bombers. All the shots were taken at night because this was one of Britain's busiest troop stations during the day. What is it about Brief Encounter that appeals to you? The romantic element and also the moral element too. That they didn't divorce their partners, but they decided that they'd stay together with their families and do the right thing. You see, we're a happily married couple and must never forget that. This is my home. You're my husband. And my children are upstairs in bed. I'm a happily married woman. Or rather, I was until a few weeks ago. This is my whole world, and it's enough. Or rather, it was until a few weeks ago. Oh, so there's a moralistic note there that appeals to yes, you. Yes, yes. Especially in our modern world, where people just divorce each other very quickly. 
So it wouldn't have happened today quite like that, would it? No, it wouldn't. It'd be quite a different story. And the modern version would be rather less moral. Yes, and not <laughs> as romantic either. <laughs> And this is it, the famous refreshment room where Celia told Trevor that they had to behave like sensible adults. You know, she dreaded coming here. In fact, she complained in a letter to a friend, we have to go up north for four weeks location filming at some horrible railway station. I don't know where. She sounds like a real southern softie, doesn't she? Now, there are two other versions of Brief Encounter. The most recent, filmed on location by Steve and Janet Clark or rather, filmed by their son-in-law and starring them. They wouldn't miss today's birthday celebrations for the world, though thankfully for all of us, it's a rest day in their hectic schedule. It's a case of loving the film so much, you know, I just wanted to be part of the film, you know, in that era, which I found very satisfying for myself, you know, my partner Janet has come along with me, you know, and it's something we've, we've been all been able to do together and portray the parts of... It's Steve become an Johnson. obsession, has it? Very much <laughs> tunnel Steve. vision, yeah. I'm not my, my type of person where I tend to, once I go into something, I get my teeth into it. I've got a goal that's complete. And Brief Encounter is such a beautiful film. Um, I'm just have to go along with it. It's a good job you play along with this, Janet, otherwise you could be very lonely. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, definitely. So yes, you're definitely. a film star? <laughs> I feel awfully guilty perched up here. It was very extravagant. Of course, you? you felt guilty perched up here. I thought he did Sorry. I love your outfits. You've presumably had those tailor made, have you? All those have actually been tailor made from the costumes, you know, that we've seen in the film. We took the stills on, you know. And consultations with the tailors, you know, and things like that. The only problem we've really had is what the colour of the clothes were. The film was in black and white, we had no idea. So we had the simplest way about it, which was then to get the clothes and the colours to suit ourselves. I don't think you could be far off. <laughs> That's the trouble with railway stations, yeah. <laughs> change, it? never changes, does it? Adds to the atmosphere. Yeah, it does have the atmosphere with everything. Although modern trains are not that appealing, are they? It would have been no, nice for no. steam trains at least. Well, here it comes now, the Brief Encounter Special, destined for Grangeover Sands, Ravenglass and Sellafield on a splendid northern morning. Although they're supposed to be enjoying a rest day, it's very difficult for Steve and Janet to switch off. The acting bugs are hard habit to break. You're not angry with me, are you? No, I'm not angry. I don't know what I am, really. I just feel... Forgive me? Forgive you for what? For everything. For meeting you in the first place. For taking the piece of grit out of your eye. For loving you. For bringing you so much misery. Thursday. And so we're off on a journey neither Trevor Howard nor Celia Johnson ever made. But the combination of steam and memories of the back row of the Regal Cinema the year after war ended was a potent cocktail. Bound love story are absorbed in their own love stories. Well, we've been here once before when we were on holiday and we liked the place, but the buffet was shut and we wanted to come back and sit in a particular seat if we could. And did you manage that? I don't know. I, I don't know which seat it was. We just sat down anywhere, so... <laughs> um, well, actually, most of those scenes were shot in the studio in yeah, Beaconsfield, you know right. that? Yeah, yes. yeah, the studio was a... or this is a recreation of the studio, isn't it, I believe? <laughs> The movie director, David Lean, liked Carnforth because it had ramps leading up to the platform. He couldn't imagine Celia Johnson running up and down the stairs. In the end, the actress warmed to the place and grew rather friendly with the station master who took a real shine to her. On those cold February days between filming, he invited her into his office to warm her legs on the cold fire. And then they began playing cards. And yes, Rod and Corrine did find the right table at what is now the Brief Encounter Café, a family-run business which exactly mirrors the studio set built for the movie. Sorry to disillusion you. 
If you'd have come here 10 years ago on the 50th anniversary of Brief Encounter, you'd have found a pile of rubble. The station was so dilapidated it was voted the worst station in Britain, and that takes a bit of doing. As for the refreshment room, it didn't exist at all, and it's only because of volunteers raising enormous amounts of money that it looks like this today. So they had to pull the plywood off, and when they let him in, there was dead pigeons upstairs, and all the roof was missing. And oh, really? He said it was in a real mess, yeah. Well, I hope it's a success, because it's got a lovely feel to it. I know it's not the original, is it? But it's close. Yes, they've done a good job. I mean, they've done, got it as close as they could, really, with the, you know, modern rules and things like that. But, yeah. You've got the old wood-burning stove here. Yeah, it's not quite real, but it looks, looks the part. And the cash register? Yeah, it's real. Does it work? It does, yeah. We have to keep it on the uh, two pence there, because it's uh, how it was in the film. What's your favourite line in the film, Steve? I think the grit in the eye scene. It has to be, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has to be, really, you know. That was done in the refreshment room. And actually where we stood now, the actual refreshment room that they actually used in the film was only about three yards from where we're standing at this <laughs> very time. Oh, please, could you give me a glass of water? I've got something in my eye and I want to bathe it. Would you like me to have a look? Oh, no, don't trouble. I expect the water will do. Thank you. A bit of coal dust, I expect. A man I knew lost the sight of one eye through getting a bit of grit in it. Nasty, very nasty. Now look up. Now look down. Keep still. I see it. There. Oh, what a relief. It was agonising. Looks like a bit of grit. It was when the express went through. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. You must remember this. A clock is still a clock. Possibly the most famous timepiece on the rail network, now restored to its original condition. Not only was it a star of the film, it was the first clock in Britain to show London time as opposed to local time. Because don't forget, it was because of the railways that we coordinated our clocks. So you've been filming here in the middle of the night, have you? That's right, we've been arriving about 9 o'clock and filming through to about uh, 1.30 in the morning. You're joking? No, I kid you not. Um, it's been freezing cold, but I wanted to do it at that time of night because literally the train traffic stops about 10 o'clock and we've got the station to ourselves. Which no... was why David Lean filmed a brief encounter like that, wasn't it, at night? Because it was too busy during the day with it the was, troops. That's right, too busy more or less in the daytime, you know, and then at night time there's only the expresses actually going through, but all passenger service more or less has stopped at the station. So what did the station staff make of you? Think you were mad? Well, there's no station staff here. The place is deserted. The actual station finishes at 10 o'clock. Everybody goes home, so we have the place to ourselves. Did you have to break in, though? No, it was open. It wasn't a problem at all. Just, just arranged it with friends of Carnforth, and that was it. Has your husband managed to hold down a full-time job while he's been doing all of this? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, luckily, he works for himself, so um, he has got a bit of leeway there. We've got a son of eight, so luckily mum has had him when we've had to go away for the weekend. In little shots we've been doing, so it's worked quite well, really. This has really been a mission for you, hasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. <laughs> a long one. <laughs> and the film at the moment is in the process of being put together, is it? Yes. Um, Paul, our son-in-law, he does all the editing. He's a manager at a camera shop, so that helps as well. It's quite handy. Yes. So he knows quite a bit about editing. So, yes, it's um, between the three of us. Well, they, they've done the most work. I sort of just turn up. <laughs> <laughs> The train now arriving at platform 4 is the 5.40 for Shirley, Lee Green and the Langford. I'm scared. Mr. Rust. Goodbye. Goodbye. I felt the touch of his hand on my shoulder for a moment. And then he walked away. Away out of my life forever. What will be your next venture then? Are you going to recreate the Railway Children or something? <laughs> no, this one is the only one I'm going to do. Um, it's took so much time and effort to do it, you know. I've enjoyed doing it, so once it's finished and it's in the camp, I'll be, I'll be happy, man. <laughs>